<laughs> have you ever been uh, afraid, terrified, just wanted to hold on to your teddy bear because you're nervous about learning something new, about perhaps teaching a concept that you've not really feel confident about teaching or performing when you just aren't really sure if you can remember all your lines. Well, I have. <laughs> I'm Glory St. Germain. And one of my really terrifying moments was the very first day that I started teaching. I did not feel very confident. In fact, I just wanted to crawl back in bed and hold on to my little teddy bear and say, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this. And and so I thought I'd share a little bit of my story with you, if that's okay. So go ahead and give me a little thumbs up. If you've ever been unsure of how to teach a concept or how to connect with um, your students or even a family member, sometimes it's like, what does it take for us to really communicate effectively? So my story is that I started as a young teacher and I was 16 years old. And it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because if you think about a child learning to ride a bike, they get on the bike and they're little and they don't really think about how many times will I have to fall off my bike before I can ride it? And yet as the older we get, I think we, we stop and think, oh, how many times am I going to you know not be successful be, before I can actually accomplish one of my goals? So I thought I would share my story with you today. So I started teaching as a young teacher. I was 16 years old and I was really nervous. I did not feel very confident. I, I just wanted to buy a car and I thought, well, this will be an easy way for me to make some money and buy a car. I was 16. What the heck? Go for it. And I think at the time I, you know, even though I wasn't very confident, I just thought, well, what have I got to lose? I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And the more I got into teaching, the more I realized how much I didn't know. And if you've ever felt like you weren't too sure about what you were doing in your teaching, what was the, the one thing that, that held you back? Go ahead and share that with me because I'm really here to, to share with you my story, but also to learn from you. And I think that's one of the great things about communicating and sharing with uh, other teachers and educators is what got you through that that terror barrier when you kind of broke through if you've ever felt like I you know I just don't have the confidence or the knowledge to to get started you know when I first began teaching as I said I I didn't really feel like I had the confidence to get started so I I started reaching out to other teachers and you know this was uh, BC before computers <laughs> how could you get that knowledge so I reached out and to a fellow, a few of my fellow colleagues, and I said, you know, what are you doing? And, and how can you help me uh, feeling confident and getting started in my own learning? And the more I got into connecting with other teachers, I realized, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that doesn't feel confident in teaching, not only teaching music theory, but just teaching in general and organizing my schedule and, and figuring out how I can be a better and more effective communicator when I am teaching. So give me a little chat here and let me know what's one of the things that really holds you back in your teaching. So when I started um, doing music theory, I realized that, well, I, I pretty much, I mean, you can't really teach an instrument, whether you're teaching piano or voice or guitar, you can't really teach anything musically unless you are teaching music theory, even though you might think you're not teaching it in a, um, um, you know, in a way where you're maybe using workbooks, but that is the universal language of music. And we all need that in order to really become musicians. So when I was teaching and looking for materials that would really help me become a better educator and music teacher and help my students with their sight reading, I realized that I didn't really know what materials would be effective for, for my students. So I began to research and I felt, uh, I don't know if I can do this. Have you ever felt that way? Just share with me. Yep, I hear you. <laughs> I know you're out there. Hey, Ivy. Uh, hey, Billy. Thanks. Nice looking teacher. <laughs> so I have a little story for you, Billy. Did you know that learning music makes you smarter? 
This is a true story. And did you know that teaching music makes you better looking? Ha ha ha. <laughs> so just look around at all those music teachers. They're all awesome, right? We got to have a lot of fun doing that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Ivy. Um, Ivy is an incredible music educator and she's constantly continuing to learn and develop and share ideas. And, you know, it's kind of terrifying if you think about it. I'm here you know, all by myself thinking, well, should I share my story with you today? I'm kind of being brave because it's scary being out there. And uh, I think we all have that inside of us, not really confident about what we're doing. And there's a first time for everything. You know, how do you get started in your teaching? What's the one thing that's that's holding you back from being, taking the next step or getting more students registered? Sometimes we're afraid even to advertise ourselves because we feel embarrassed. And I know in my own journey, I thought, well, who am I, you know? maybe I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough resources. I just, I didn't really feel like I could, I could share my story. And the more I thought about it, I thought, well, what am I teaching my students then? I'm teaching them about confidence, just do it. And sometimes it's easier to, to say something than to do it. And we're always great at giving advice to others, but sometimes we don't listen to our own advice and implement that into our own life. So I began thinking, all right, it's time for me to, you know, be a grown up and uh, start teaching music theory. So back then I started teaching and I really couldn't find materials that I felt were, you know, um, something that I could really motivate and excite my students with. So I began my journey and I just started writing worksheets and I thought, well, this will help some of my students. And if you've ever created worksheets, you know that it's a great idea at the time, but the more you get into that, the more time consuming it is. And you still need to have all the tools and everything that you need in order to create these worksheets. So literally when I started writing, I had a staff paper and uh, a pair of scissors and some scotch tape. <laughs> and I would write all these worksheets using this little scrap paper, scotch tape them into a page and then photocopy. And that's how I started writing. And in fact, I still have some of my original manuscripts that I wrote. And uh, it's kind of funny when I look back now, that was 10 years ago, but I didn't know um, how to use any other systems, Finale or, or any other systems in order to, to become a publisher. So I began my journey just by creating these worksheets. And what happened was that my students were enthusiastic about learning. And if you've ever had someone in your teaching studio who's enthusiastic, just give me a little yes, enthusiastic, because how do you really motivate your students and get them excited about learning? Um, well, first of all, it has to come from you, the teacher, right? We need to share our enthusiasm for our students. And second, we have to have materials that will help us uh, be effective as educators. So that was my dream. And I began writing and the more I wrote, the more pages I had and I began to create my very first book and it was kind of exciting. So here I have this book and now what do I do? And again, once every time you step outside your comfort zone, you gain that little more confidence. So here I'd finally completed my book. Now, what do I do? I didn't even know anything about what do you do with the cover and, and, and what's an ISBN number and what's a barcode and, and all of these things. So I had to learn and I had to grow and that put me outside my comfort zone. Uh, but I learned that. And after I created my first workbook, I started thinking, well, if I did one, I probably could write another one. And so the next workbook evolved and then the next workbook evolved. And finally, I realized, oh, maybe I can do this. And maybe other teachers would be interested in doing this as well. And even though inside, you know, we still have that little voice that says, no, nah, you're not good enough. What do you know? Who's going to listen to you? We all have that self-doubt. What's the one thing that that maybe makes you think about how you can be a better educator. What is your um, your secret sauce that that helps you kind of stay connected? Is there, do you feel confident when you listen to music? I have certain songs that when I listen to them, they just get me all pumped up and, and I go, you know what? I can do it. Sometimes it's music that helps us motivate us. Sometimes it's just calling a friend and that friend might be someone that is always encouraging. And what are the words they use to help you get past your point of, I can't do this too. Yes, I can. 
sometimes it's working with a coach. I have the great privilege of having three coaches in my life that are all a huge part of my growth and, and stepping outside of my comfort zone. They push me, they encourage me, and they kind of make me do it. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that because I think that otherwise you just kind of sit inside the little box. You're just a little bit stale and you're not really moving forward. So what are you doing that's that's maybe um, the one thing that helps you get past that I can't do it feeling. Share with me because I'd love to hear from you. I've got some great friends that are on the call. Hey, Billy, I'm glad that you're here with me today. And Ivy is still here. <laughs> it's good to know that I'm not alone. Sometimes when you're, um, you know, teaching, you feel alone. Who can I talk to? Who's going to answer those questions for me when I just don't really know how to teach a music theory concept? I will ask you, and even if you're watching the replay, just share with me, what is your you know, biggest frustration or, or music theory concept that you always struggle with teaching? Because I can totally relate to that. Even today, after you know writing 50 music theory books, I am still looking for answers to questions. And when I do, I love to share them with you uh, in our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group or through teaching videos or, you know, we're never stop learning. NEPD, uh, my mother called it never ending professional development. And we just have to keep learning and growing. One of the things that I wanted to share with you was that um, when I did my very first workshop, oh my goodness, I will never forget this day. I, and it may be hard to believe, but I was one of those super, super shy people. You know, the kind of people that sit on their hands when they go to a workshop because they, they don't want to put their hand up for fear that they might actually be, be asked to answer a question. <laughs> that was me. And I remember going to a workshop with my friend and I would be, you know, don't let me put my hand up because they always ask me. I don't know. I always get picked and I'm, I'm too afraid. And so there was a speaker at the front of the room who I knew very well. And I was, of course, sitting in the audience. And her question was, how many of you do music recitals? And of course, everyone put up their hand. We were a room full of teachers. And she looked me right in the eye and she said, Glory, come up to the front and share with everyone how you organize and put together your music recitals. And I looked at my friend who was with me and I went, I told you, like, now I'm stuck. <laughs> they always pick on me. So I had to go up to the front and, of course, share my story of how I do music recitals. And it was terrifying. And yet when I was done, teachers came up to me and said, I'm so glad you shared your story because it really, um, you know, it helped me think, you know what, if you can do it, I can do it. And I could just get started. And I realized that sharing stories and being truthful and honest about what's happening in your life and sharing that with your fellow teachers and even with your students, you never know how much you really help them in accomplishing their goals. And when I went to do my first workshop, as I said, I was terrified and I thought to myself, you know, who am I to be teaching all these teachers about music theory? And some of them have, you know, many more letters behind their name than I do. And, and, and so I kind of had to think about it for a minute, but then I realized that it's not about, you know, what you get, it's about what you become. And how could I become a better educator and communicator? And through doing that very first terrifying presentation, which was 10 years ago now, um, I realized that sharing is one of the greatest gifts that we can give, not only to our students, but to fellow teachers. And I really invite you to share with me and to share with your fellow colleagues your story of encouragement and the fear factor, like hugging on to your little teddy bear thinking like, I can't do this. I can't do this. But in fact, you can. Even those that have accomplished great things in their life, such as, you know, performing at a, at a concert hall, they all had the first time. They all had to get on the bike and ride it for the first time, not thinking about how many times they were going to fall off the bike before they could successfully ride, but just doing it. Just, just take a chance and just go out there and do it. I'm, I really feel passionate about providing education and, um, and that's why I really started doing the workshops and doing the Facebook lives. And in fact, through doing those workshops, I realized that I could help teachers in their journey. I continued my education. I became a neurolinguistic practitioner, uh, NLP. 
And it really it teaches you about how to communicate more effectively with visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. And identifying learning styles of your students. Do you even know the learning style of your students? Maybe you don't. And I didn't either. I didn't even know my own learning style. And the more I studied, the more I realized how important it is to be able to, to understand physiology and communication skills. It's not just the words that we use, but it's the tonality, it's the pitch, it's the volume, it's the physiology that we use in order to communicate effectively. And it helped me immensely in teaching my students. And I decided that I wanted to share that with you. And so I incorporated that into the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course for teachers because I thought, well, if it's helped me this much, I'm sure it will help other people as well. So I wanted to make sure to share that with you. Um, in learning, I have a question for you. What are you working on right now in your professional development? I'm curious, are you um, taking an online course? Are you reading a book? Uh, are you studying with a music teacher to kind of take your own musicianship to the next level? What are you doing that's really um, moving you forward towards your personal goals? Go ahead and share that with me. I, I love hearing other ideas on how we can grow. Maybe you're part of a group. Um, one of the things I think is really essential is just being part of a musical community whether you're um, a member of your local music teachers association where you can go out for coffee and connect that way, or whether you are part of an online community, such as a Facebook group where you can connect and talk to fellow teachers, or whether you're part of a, a membership group where it's just a private group and you know that you can be yourself. No question is a silly question. You can ask as many questions as you want. So what are the, some of the things that, that encourage you to continue learning? I'd love to hear your ideas on, on how you can grow and, and how you can continue to develop as well. Uh, one of the things that I'm, oh, I see we have uh, Patty. Hey, Patty, nice to see you here today. One of the things that um, I think is really important, and I'm going to throw this out to, to Patty as well, is how can you really um, connect with your students on a deeper level? What do you do? Do you play games? Do you um, work on duets together? Like, what is the one thing that you feel is, you know, if the students aren't focused or there, what's one thing that you can maybe do that will help you connect with your student? Because it's really crucial to, to put it out there and to really know this is something that be, can be effective in communicating with my students. So I'm curious to see what's your magic potion because I'd love to hear it. <laughs> um, in, in just thinking back about what's moving forward and what's my new challenges in my fear factor uh, is that I'm continuing to learn. Uh, I've actually just registered for a couple of online courses myself. And I think to continue with our professional development is essential. And it's why I work on marketing uh, strategies. I work on pedagogy. I am a member of a number of groups, uh, including the Tim, Ta uh, Tim Topham's Inner Circle. Um, I love to connect with fellow educators. And even in the series that I'm doing with our Ultimate Music Interviews, I learn from every one of those uh, interviews that, that I share with you on uh, what is working for them how are they growing in their own professional development and it is just this wealth of information and I really want to encourage you to uh, check out the ultimate music theory certification course I've created this for you just you know go ahead and I believe the link is in there you can click on it to learn more and it's really about empowering you as an educator as I was serving teachers, I really felt that I needed to go deeper and share all those tips and tricks on how do you teach music theory more effectively? How do you, first of all, learn the concept? And then how do you explain it? What can you do to make it easy for students? You know, Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. And as a young student myself, uh, I didn't I didn't really feel confident about learning music theory. And although I had a lovely teacher, I think she herself didn't feel confident in teaching theory. And therefore, it was a reflection on my learning because 
it, it, you know, she wasn't being effective in her teaching. And it wasn't in the, and of course that reflected on me as a, when I became a teacher. And it wasn't until I started researching and, and developing my own program and, and doing all of these years and years of development that I realized, ah, there is an easier way to do this. So uh, I hope that you'll join me in exploring uh, your own avenue of professional development just to become the best version of ourselves that we can be teaching. Um, I'm really excited to connect with you. I'd love it if you would share your comments in here because I think it's one of the the most important things that we can do is to share ideas and really to develop as professional educators. Um, I'm going to share with you the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. I'm, I'm excited to tell you about it. Um, how can you become certified? Just click on the link. All the information is there. Uh, we actually go through all of the um, educational aspects of not only uh, learning and how to teach these effectively, but how can you grow in communication skills? I think that's huge. What is the thing that we need to do is not just to know music theory, but to express ourselves and how can we teach that concept? Oh my goodness, I have learned so many things by listening to my students as I'm teaching them and the questions that they ask and then realizing, oh, that student is a visual learner or that student is an auditory learner, or they're a visual learner. And so I need to teach to that student's needs. And as I went through my NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, Neuro is how we think, linguistic is how we communicate, and programming is how we get the results that we get. So through that, I realized, oh, I can really go a little deeper in helping my students um, to become the best version of themselves if I'm teaching to the child and not just in my own teaching style and in my own learning style. So it was a real aha moment for me. And if you've ever had a student where you just don't connect with them, uh, just go ahead and share with me. Yep, I hear you. There is no connection here. <laughs> and it's frustrating and you don't even know why. You, you, like the, you like the student, but there's something lacking in just communicating. And sometimes it's just because we don't realize that their learning style is completely different from us. And so by listening to the words they use, the tonality, the physiology, all of those things contribute to having better communication skills. And, you know, I talked about getting on and just riding a bike for the first time. You know, we don't think about how many times are we going to fall off the bike and scrape our knees or or how wobbly it'll be. We just get on and try it because sometimes children are more apt to be open to learning. And when we get to be adults, sometimes we think, oh, I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough or we have more um, we're more intimidated by by taking that step. And I can tell you honestly that as I grow and myself as an educator, I see teachers of all ages that are coming out and saying, hey, you know what, I'm 78 years old and, and I'm signing up for this course because I'm still learning. And you only have two choices. I mean, you're either regressing or progressing. And, and, and you know, I think if you just stand still and do nothing, your students will, will not do as well as if they see you learning. I think I encourage my students by saying, hey, I'm taking a course right now. What are you doing? <laughs> and uh, Jim said, Oh, um, uh, Glory. Oh, if there's any ultimate music theory teachers, Jim LeClaire is, uh, LeClaire is asking a question and talking about ultimate music theory certified teachers. And I want to say welcome because Jim uh, is actually in the ultimate music theory certification course right now. He's going through the program. I'm super proud of you, Jim. Uh, actually, Jim is just getting his soul on Tito that are on the way. And I know Ivy has hers that kind of sit beside her when she's teaching. So Sola and Tito, I should tell you a little bit about their personalities, because when we think about all of us that are here today, and whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay, um, we're all different and unique, which is awesome. And we all learn from each other, but we are all similar as well. And this is my little Sola. And Sola says, I feel music in my heart. I love to sing and dance and perform. And 
I'm definitely a Sola. It's kind of my personality. But when I think about Tito, he has a little different personality. And Sheila McKibben Yuren, who is the co author with me on the Ultimate Music Theory Supplemental Series and the our brand new um, Ultimate Music Theory ABC series. And Sheila and I have been together for a long time. Uh, Sheila connected with me after I'd just written the uh, first series that I wrote, and she became my editor. And now she's the Ultimate Music Theory. Uh, certification course examiner and she's a very dear friend and Sheila is definitely a Tito so Tito is my name is Tito I feel music in my hands and feet and I love to count and march and conduct and as you're going through the certification course you'll realize that not only are Sola and Tito uh, really cute <laughs> little stuffies but they are also teaching tools that you can use with your students I have one final story to share with you, and that is that when I was teaching, I had an, um, a um, university student who was working on her grade nine piano. Her name is Fiona, and she was definitely a Tito. You know, she had very good posture. Uh, she sat up straight. She was good at counting, and everything was precise in her in her music. And I thought what words can I use? I mean, I'm a teacher here. I need to encourage her. What words can I use to give her that thought process where she will play just that little more musically as she's going in to do her exams? Everything was in time. And yes, she played with expression and her dynamics were there. But you know, that little missing thing that you need to really perform. What can I do to, to help her in that mindset? And Sola and Tito were sitting on my piano that day. All of my students know who they are. And so I just said, simply said to Fiona, I said, Fiona, why don't you play that as if you're Sola? And something almost magical happened. I noticed that Fiona just, all of a sudden her arms came away from her body and she just transcended into Sola. How would Sola play this? Well, as I said, Sola is... She plays from her heart and she loves to sing and dance and she loves to perform. And so she became Sola and she played her pieces. And I was just like in awe of her performance because now no longer was she thinking of just herself, but she was performing as another character. And she went on to do her level nine piano exam. And in fact, she scored 90% on her exam and she was just blown away by the magic. And I said, sometimes we have to become, we have to have that confidence. You know, I talked a little bit earlier about what do you do in order to become confident if you are teaching for the very first time, or if you're just starting to teach music theory, or you want to market yourself, or you want to fill your studio with students, what is it that's going to give you the confidence to go after your dream and dream big? My mom used to say, Glory, dream big, because whatever the mind can, can conceive and believe, you can achieve. And that's actually Napoleon Hill. And I believe those firmly. I believe that if you can really think about what you want to accomplish and go after it, you can achieve it, but you need to have a growth mindset. You need to be open to learning and receiving these blessings. And I'm truly here for you. Um, I started my journey as a really shy, I know hard to believe, <laughs> as a really shy, not very confident teacher, but I had a desire. In fact, I had a burning desire to grow to become better if i was going to serve my community of students i needed to show them that i truly care about them and developing my own professional development through continuous learning and that's why i really developed the ultimate music theory program so that it would provide students with an easy way to learn music theory that would be applicable to whether they were voice students or uh, piano students or whatever instrument they were learning, it would help them grow in their musicianship skills. And then ultimately, by doing workshops and connecting with teachers, I realized, oh, there's a lot of teachers out there like me that are just looking for 
What words can I use? And perhaps you don't have the time to do the complete neuro-linguistic programming um, certification as I did. And it's why I incorporated into the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. So you could have all those shortcuts and you could get there easily and build confidence in your teaching. And I want to serve you well with that. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I see that I have Jim on here and I've got a lot of um, Ultimate Music Theory certified teachers that are in our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group. Uh, feel free to join our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group because you will see it's a fantastic community that will reach out to you and connect with you and answer your questions as well. We really support each other and I look forward to serving you. So be a little bit of a Sola and a little bit of a Tito. <laughs> And I look forward to hearing your, uh, your comments and answering your questions. And I'm here for you. So enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, teach with passion.